Welcome to Light Cat Stitches. My name is Tamara and I'm here with floss tube number 13. There are about 700 of you now and that's astounding. I um, am so grateful for every subscription. Thank you so much. It just spurs me on to make some more videos, which I'm sure if you've got a floss tube, you, you know the feeling. Um, it's astonishing really to think that so many people want to see the things that you work on. Uh, this is my last update of April and it's been two weeks since my last video so I do have quite a few things to show you. On my list I've got one fully finished object. I don't have any new finishes uh, that I've finished cross stitching. I have two new starts and I have got six whips so it's a pretty full video and I think uh, after that I'll talk a little bit about plans a little bit of haul, not too much, and um, just also some of the floss tubes I've been watching uh, just to give a little bit of a shout out because there's been quite a few people that have um, also shouted me out and I wanted to sort of um, spread, the, spread the good word. So, first things first. The first thing I fully finished wasn't what I actually planned to fully finish. Um, I did get some frames in and uh, I have some of the objects that I'm going to frame in them sort of loosely set in, but I haven't laced them yet. So I'll show them next time. But I was also trying out um, the double-sided adhesive tape. Lindy Stitches mentions in her videos, I think. So I wanted to try it out on something smaller. Um, and it's, it's archival, so uh, there's no danger and it's, a little bit better than glue, I think. Um, maybe not as repositionable. Um, I mean, you can reposition, but it's, you know, um, not as not as great as the glue, I guess. But I did want to finish this um, here, which is uh, Season's Greetings from the Fox family from Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. This was the Jingle Ball release. And I ordered it as a kit. So um, if I remember correctly, because this was back in December, you order, you could pick a couple different colorways. So I used the called for um, floss. The fabric is, picture this plus 32 count vellum. And they send you all of the finishing materials. So it's supposed to be like a little postcard-ish. One of my pom-poms is on the edge of here of falling off <laughs> but so they send you the fabric they send the pom-pom trim this is like a lady dots creates um and it's finished on like a poster like a small poster board i wonder if i have can i send you a couple of extras but it's finished on this kind of board so the way i finished it and they did do a finishing class but i didn't watch it when it was on and I forgot to download it. So I did my own, <laughs> made it up as I went along. So I taped, I put the tape on and first I finished the stitched piece, which it's not perfect. Um, you can see it's maybe pulled a little tighter in some areas than others. Um, but it was my first time finishing this way, so that's okay. And then I did the backing fabric on a separate piece and then I glued the pom-pom trim to one side and then I glued the two pieces of board together. So that's how I finished it. <laughs> uh, no lacing, nothing, nothing like that. I think lacing would give you a better result. I'll just let you look at it for a second. Um, but for my first time finishing this way and at a glance, I think it looks really nice. My plan is to just sort of prop it up. I have like a, um, a shelf that's got a lip, so I'll just prop it up in there. And I think it'll be a lovely finished piece to have out for Christmas time. And I'm really happy that I finally got it finished. It was sort of sitting in the box forever. I finished stitching it in about six days I think and then <laughs> and then it was just sitting there as things usually do so I figured it was time 
because I have some larger things I wanted to finish and it was a great way to try that tape out. Um, I think I might continue to use the tape for small finishes, um, things that are, you know, hard, flat finishes like this. Don't think I'm gonna use it for the frames. So that's that, put that in there. So no new finished stitching pieces, but like I said, I do have two new starts. The first one I started, let's see, I think I started it before our last video, but I had only put like maybe two stitches into it. So um, I started on April 9th. Yeah, so it was just a few days before our video. The Sweetheart Tree Shamrock Sampler. Sorry for the glare from the ring light. The pictures are really hard to see, but essentially it's um, white work, some cross stitch, some black work, um, some specialty stitches, some satin stitches, um, surface weaving, half diamond eye. So it's got a lot of specialty stitches, herringbone, all things I've never done before. Let's just put it that way. I mean, I've done satin stitch and I've done back stitch, um, but, and black work, I guess, but, um, it's a way to try things out. In this, and it's really just a test. Mine looks nothing like this yet. I've only started stitching at the very top. I started center top and worked down since I didn't want to count in and all that. Um, I'm stitching mine on a 28 count linen in Swamp. I picked this plus and these are the flosses I'm using. I've got a Weeks Dye Works Moss, 934, a Color and Cotton Celery, 3348, and Gecko. So very different <laughs> than what's called for. And this is what it looks like so far. So these are satin stitches to make the little clovers. And then this is just back stitch. This is long stitch that's been couched. And this is more back stitch. I am not as happy with this back stitching, especially here. So I'm gonna take that out, this long stitch, and do, I'm gonna take out this back stitch and do a long stitch that's couched so I don't have quite so many breaks. The size of the fabric makes the back stitching a little hard. Um, it's not as, it's not as clean looking. Um, I need to work on my tension. That'll also help so that there, you're not sort of pulling open the holes in the linen. Um, so I'm going to practice that. And however, I do really love the, the way the satin stitch looks and the colors that I've chosen and what it'll look like from a distance, right? So if you think about how you'll see it here, um, I think it'll be really pretty. And my plan is to stitch this as a gift. And rather than doing the alphabet, I'm gonna change the alphabet out for a quote. Um, it's for my mother-in-law, uh, who is Irish. Um, and so I may do an Irish blessing in here or potentially just a smaller phrase. She loves like the phrase life is good. Um, something like that. So I haven't gotten there yet. I haven't worked on it since the first day I picked it up. Um, I did put, you know, these stitches in across two days. The satin stitches up here, I took out several times <laughs> and had to redo them until I got them. The hard part really wasn't doing them once, it was doing them four times and getting them to look similar. So I made notes because there's a bunch more of them. So let's hope that when I pick it up again, I can make the rest of the clovers look similar to these ones. But I think I can. And it's two strands over the 28, which is another reason why the back stitch looks a little clunky. But that's okay. And the fabric is huge. I, I won't use all of it, obviously. 
Um, but if I mess it up here, I've got plenty of fabric to, to try it over again. Um, but I did pick the, the darker side so that I could have those lighter greens show up. I am excited about it and um, my mother-in-law loves green, so I think it'll be a very good, uh, very good gift for her. So my next new start, I'm gonna have to pause and grab. Okay, so my next new start, which I think everybody has started because it's uh, a beautiful stitch and has been so graciously offered for free is the bird nerd or bird herd uh, which will look like this when it's done it's from boomerang stitches who is half of the hathaway stitchers who uh you should be watching if you haven't i'm sure i'm the last person on the planet to mention it but they've been sort of taking floss tube by storm and this pattern is gorgeous look at this and i am a bird nerd okay so i'm doing the nerd version um and it's part of the bird herd nerd cell or uh, the fancy bird cell. Um, <clears throat> I'm doing mine on the other half of fabric from <laughs> my Fox family um, season's greetings piece. So it's 32 count picture this plus vellum. I'm going to have an inch <laughs> on either side. It's gonna be real, real tight. But that's okay. Uh, I'm gonna do this as a flat finish, so I'm not gonna frame it. I'm not worried. This is where I've gotten to. It's gorgeous. However, I did a floss conversion <laughs> to bestitch me silks for the most part. Um, some of the color ways that I did not change are 832, 3799, and Ecru. One being, Ecru is just a stand, you know, it's an off-white. 3799, because I think there's only like 12 stitches in that. And then 832, because it's the perfect color. It is one of my favorites. Um, and I love it. I switched everything else out to Bestitch Me Silk which I um, am a member of the club, so I get, I get silk from them every month along with fabric. And I'm happy to share the colors I chose. Very, very similar. I think this is, you know, it's my first day on the job here. Um, <laughs> very similar and, you know, um, to the colors that were chosen um, from the original pattern except I would say my reds. Um, originally it's 351 and 352, I think, or 352 and 353. These are much more pink, but I think it works. <clears throat> Looks like a bird to me. So this bird is mostly is done, except for the eye, the little bit of here, and then this is the wing. So I haven't done the wing yet. But it's beautiful and I um, I put like 580 stitches in this the first day I did it and I couldn't put it down so yeah bird nerd um, you can find the pattern on uh, boomerang stitches Instagram they have a link tree to their free patterns they also have some paid patterns in their Etsy and you should check them out okay that's it for new starts, only two. It'll probably be a different story next month, but that's that's plans. <clears throat> Let's talk about whips. So I had six whips, and this time I have some stats. Um, I've been using Notion for the last couple of months to try and get my, um, kind of get a sense of like what an average stitchy day looks like for me the kind of whips I'm gravitating towards, uh, just to track my whips in general. Um, I have my whip go in there now, and I used to do everything in a journal, but I didn't always pick up my journal. Um, so it'd be kind of like retroactively trying to fill it in, which didn't seem like a great system. Um, and so now when I'm done stitching something, 
um, I just put it in, I know, you know, for the day, what the, you know, uh, if it's not a pattern keeper pattern, I'm estimating my stitches. So I count kind of how many stitches I get with one strand of floss. Then I'm just counting how many strands of floss I put in, which is much easier. It's not um, maybe necessarily 100% accurate. So take that with a grain of salt, but that is what I'm doing. So the first thing I worked on is Charlotte Warrington, which is the BAP Sal, uh, the big BAP from uh, Home homespun sampler it had been offered again for a second run and it's done so I hope if you wanted it you got it this is the uh, original Charlotte Warrington 1838 there's a sal for this in the group so that we'd be finished in two years I am almost done with my April section and I better get on it because there's only a couple of days left I'm using mostly the called for colors, um, though I've made changes, which I've mentioned before. I'm happy to sort of talk about that. The linen is 32 count Mason linen sewing box. And this is what we look like. And when you saw it last time, it looked like this. Tell me that doesn't just sing off of this fabric. Oh, I know it's a little hard to see with the light behind it. Let's fold it up a little bit. So this, um, I have started working on the specialty stitches, which they're satin stitch in these flowers. Not my favorite, but from a distance looks pretty good. Everything is finished up to here. So this is all done which is pages one, two, and then three, I think the page break is here and then maybe here, in the middle of this flower. So um, once I finish filling these in and this bit up here and up here, three will be done and then four is over to here. And on four, there's another one of these and another moth that go here. And then I'll have finished my April section. So I'm a little behind and there's a good reason for that. So I, they say the more experienced you get, the quicker you make a mistake. I stitched mine with two strands of floss over two threads on 32 count, which is just like instinct, I think at this point, but the kit was sold for one over one. So I have to buy some floss. I have to buy a lot of floss, if I'm going to be honest with you. Um, and I want to do it soon so that I can um, mix and match if the dye lots have changed. Hopefully they haven't changed significantly. I'm a little nervous. I think the biggest, the one, honestly, I wouldn't even have noticed, um, except I have used so much of this red and so much of this green. I'm on my third skein and it was sent with five and I'm like, um, no. <laughs> so before I put any more work into it, I really want to get the additional floss so that I can start blending and make it less obvious that I had to, um, to add more. A little bit sad but it's fine it's fixable all things are fixable most things are fixable if I didn't say this isn't a Joanna 1966 bag she's on Etsy I just dropped my floss it's fine uh, she does these quilted style bags which are gorgeous we have fabric on the inside so good and I have quite a few of her bags now so that's a bit of a tale of woe. Um, I am stitching this as my marriage sampler. My goal is to have it finished potentially by next December, December 2025, because um, that's our 15 year wedding anniversary. 
which I, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand, but that's the, that's the truth. Um, if I didn't say, I put about approximately 900 stitches in there. So my next piece uh, was a whip go call. This is in an Ever Totes bag. And it was my last whip go finish. So I had finished my um, Halloween wreath from last time. That was my whip go call. And then it also had picked Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. And my goal was to get a thousand stitches which I have done. Last time you saw it, it looked like this. And now it looks like this. And does it look like a thousand stitches? I mean, it does, but it doesn't. <laughs> it's hard to tell, but there's about a hundred of them, <laughs> 90 or so across here in the top. This house is new. All of this is new. All of this blue, except for like under here, is new. Some of the horses filled in. Some shoes. There's a part of the lady's dress here. I might be a little under, let's say 900, but I'm calling it. <laughs> I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's a thousand or very, very close. This is on a 40 count fox and rabbit Duxbury. And it's a big piece. This block is finished. This is my second block that I'm working on. Um, it's got a long way to go. That's okay. I was just working on this last night, so still in the in the nerge hoop. It's looking really pretty. I'm stitching this with the Vicky Clayton silk conversion. So Vicki sends her flosses on spools. And when I'm stitching, I just take off a couple of lengths and put them on a floss drop because they come six stranded and I don't like to wind it back on. Um, and if you put your silks on floss drops, you wanna be careful with them because these look pretty good, but they're starting to get fuzzy because they go in and out of the bag and they're rubbing. So um, just be forewarned, just be gentle with them, I guess. Um, so that's it for Christmas at Hawthorne Hollow. And working on this, I had started thinking about some of my other whips that I have with silk and thinking especially if they're BAPs, which this one is. This I started for the BAP to school sal, also on a Joanna 1966 bag. And Grimshaw, 1818. Got a scarlet letter, which is gorgeous. I love, I love this sampler. I love this sampler and this is like, I have like so many more black, uh, just mono, uh, samplers that I want to do. I am stitching this on 40 count needle bling heirloom with uh, a Vera Soie Noir. And last time you saw it, it looked like this. And I've put approximately 600 stitches into this. And I finished this motif. And I started the next one. So there are five Quaker, half Quakers at the top. And so I'm over halfway. Doesn't that look gorgeous? The Averisua silk is, it's either thicker than the Vicki Clayton silk, or this is actually maybe closer to a 44 or 45 count. It's, the coverage is really nice. It kind of feels like two strands over on 36 or something. It's it's really nice. Like look at that solid black stitching. And then from a distance. Tell me that's not gonna be beautiful. Oh, I can't wait. And yeah, it was just uh 
it just struck me that I wanted to work on it, so I pulled it out. Same thing with the other one. <clears throat> this one I actually dreamed about. Have you ever dreamed about cross-stitching or dreamed about your whips? I, I hadn't. Um, and so when I did, I was like, well, I'm gonna take that as a sign that I need to work on it. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, allergies are a little, <clears throat> a little bad. This is Praiseworthy Stitches uh, CD Pumpkin Cottage which will look like this when it's done. Last time you saw it, it looked like this. And I have put 400 stitches into this. It is, I'm stitching this, um, I'm stitching CD Pumpkin Cottage with the called for floss, but I'm using a different fabric. Uh, it originally calls for 32 count haunted, is that right? 32 count Echo from Picture This Plus. I'm using 40 count something. I can't remember what it is. But I've put in all of this white. This window is new. So this has gotten about 400 stitches. I've also started frogging. This green is supposed to be black, but that's okay. And in my dream, I was like, why don't I just bring it all the way left on one side and then I can work left to right instead of like, cause I center started and worked this way, which is very easy for me. Working this way is a little harder. And it worked, I put 400 stitches in, so. Call it a win. So pretty. The next thing I worked on was my full coverage, which is Allegory of Spring. It'll look like this when it's done. I put 1,216 stitches into this. I'm using um, the called for DMC. I've started kidding up, you know, putting more and more on the floss drops. There's still so many colors to go. I'm stitching it on 28 count, two over one half cross. And last time you saw it, it looked like this. And now it looks like this. These are waste away threads. Don't mind those. What did I do? I brought this down and over. And the page finish is like here-ish. So. It's still a lot of brown, but I've got one butterfly in which I had before. And this right here and this right here is like the tail of a swallow bird. So I'm starting to bring that down and over and then the bird comes down like this way, wings, wings. So it's pretty big, but I'm excited to see like a thing. Like getting the butterfly in was nice, but I wanna see some more stuff. And then down here, there's like a sheep. And then there's another butterfly like over here. No, here, somewhere in there. I mean, that's what it looks like, so you'll see. And there's still some gaps I'm missing one color missing like 09 I think um which I have it I just I can't find it and I it was before I started using notion to track where my um floss is so that's all right it's my first time doing two over one half cross it looks a little better in person I think than it does on camera on camera you can see a bit of the fabric I don't really notice it as much in person and then from far away it looks good except for you know where I have the gaps and my last whip is the April uh, leap day cell for Carolyn Manning hummingbird garden which looks like this <clears throat> and last time you saw it it looked like that and I've put in about a 300 stitches or so 
I'm still working on it. Uh, I want to finish this mandala before I put it away again. And so I've added, you know, all of these green doobly doos and then some of the purple in here. And it's so pretty. I am so excited. I think it'll be really gorgeous when it's done. And this is with the, I'm, I used the Sullivan colorway um, to create an over dyed slash DMC floss conversion. But it's very true to, to the original. And those are my whips. So a lot of stitching. Once April's finished out, I will give you like my stats because um, I'm curious and maybe you're curious. So plans. So whip go calls were out and the two whips that were called were for me, well, it was three numbers, but I keep um, 13 as the free space. And if you don't know what whip go is, it's from Jesse Marie does stuff. And then there's actually a whip go and it's like a bingo board. She calls numbers, you add whips to it. She explains it way better. But <clears throat> my first one was Jane Atkinson. This is my John Milton sampler. Uh, John Milton wrote Paradise Lost. This is Adam and Eve. Not a particularly religious person, but I worked on um, John Milton for my PhD. And so this is gonna be my Milton sampler. <clears throat> And I just put it in the nerd's hoop, but last time you saw it, it looked like that. And I added, I've added like this. So this is on a 40 count platinum with the called for Verisois. And it's so pretty. I can't wait to put in a thousand stitches, which is my goal. The next one that was called was um, Modern Folk Embroidery, the Namari Tapestry which uh, was a cell that has ended. I think there were several people who successfully completed it. I'm not one of them. I'm not even close. <laughs> um, I'm stitching this on, what is it? 40 Count Shadow by Picture This Plus. And that's where I'm at. The size of the lights not behind it. This is the top. I wanted to make sure I had enough fabric, which I do. Um, I'm stitching this with Gentle Art Heirloom Gold. Oops. So very similar to the cover picture. A thousand stitches or 10 days. It might be 10 days instead of a thousand stitches because stitching on black, I have to be in the right mood and in the right frame of mind and with the right light. And there are just a few more barriers than, uh, than with everything else. So those are my plans. And then I'll also continue to work on um, Charlotte Warrington as soon as I get more floss which I'm planning on ordering today. Okay. Some purchases, a little bit of haul. <clears throat> I got, it's gonna be crinkly, I'm so sorry. The Bitty Bowl Club from Mountain. So that's Sandra Workman. Um, and uh, it's the Bitty Bowls. I haven't done any of April's and this is what it comes with for May. So it comes with the flowers and the fabric and the finishing materials. Um, so you can create that little scene. Don't know if I'll start it, but maybe. I need to kit it up with the floss. And then I bought a kit from the Exemplary, which is an Etsy. Uh, site and I bought the embroideress which is an original design from the exemplary this is what it looks like and it comes with the floss and the linen and it was 
really, really nice. <clears throat> it's a 30 count cream linen, linen. It also it uses cross stitch, queen stitch, Algerian eye, satin, rice, back stitch, French knot, and 10 stitch. Finish design is 12 by 21. And this is pretty much full coverage down here. But it's in an antique style. And I love the quote, which is from uh, Cooper, uh, an 18th century poet. So I studied 18th century literature. And this is Cooper says, but here the needle plies its long task. The pattern grows the well-depicted flower, unfolds its bosom buds and leaves and sprigs, follow the nimble fingers of the fair. A wreath that cannot fade of flowers that blow with most success when all besides decay. Yep. So that'll be started at some point. <clears throat> also, things that I know I'm going to start. I had planned to start the Deadly Aquarium Sal from Lola Crow. Uh, the first clue is out. It looks like this. Haven't started it yet. I had to get my floss all together and all that. So maybe you'll see that next time. And then also uh, In Praise of Pollinators by the Blue Flower. Um, there's a couple of stitch alongs for that, but I learned about one from Lala D Stitches, who is an excellent floss tuber. That starts on 4.30. So I'm planning to start it then. I've kitted it up and I'm ready to go. Speaking of floss tubers, now that we're at the end, some people you should watch, Hathaway Stitchers, who I mentioned before, Tina Stitches, who is in Canada. She's a bit of a smaller following, but she does such beautiful work. Her, she does full coverage. She does um, mirabilia. She's working on the, um, the reindeer in the sleigh. She's done, um, Quite a few of like the sweetheart trees and just nans so the finer you know finer work um samplers she does a lot of everything um not so much maybe modern pieces uh but beautiful work and also just very relaxing to listen to seasook stitch who is hosting the hummingbird uh, garden sow stitchy owl who's new to me i just started watching she does some lovely full coverage and um, some more samplery style pieces. And then KBH Stitches, who also does like a bit of everything. So I love stitchers that work on everything because that's what I like to work on. So uh, I find these people to be very inspiring and um, I'm always excited when they put out a new video. I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing, for liking, for commenting. Um, I've met someone local who we might get together and stitch. I've never had a real life stitchy friend before. Melanie, if you're watching, I'm so excited. <laughs> um, we both live in New Jersey, so we're going to try and meet up. And that's perfect. That's just like, that's more than I could have hoped for, honestly. Like the online camaraderie is great. A real life interaction, that's a bonus and one that I'm really excited for. So thanks so much, everyone. I will catch you hopefully in about two weeks and I'll talk to you then. Take care. Enjoy every stitch. Bye.